Hi, good morning everyone. This time we are going to tackle the Egyptian literature, but first I will explain to us to you the cultural and historical background of Egyptian literature. See the slide. All right. So these are the Egyptian cultures. So there, there are a lot of cultures that the Egyptian people practice them. First, we have good art, music, dance, either literature or whatever. However, these cultures are based mostly on the identified sense from monuments, temples and tombs, and translating and interpreting this inscription and text found in them. Because you know, in Egypt, there you can find, uh, in their old days, you can find a lot of, of information or text that are being scraped on tombs, uh, walls, and even in caves. So, uh, their cultures or their literatures are based on uh, something like uh, the content of their literatures are mostly private, are uh, driven from that, uh, maybe from that uh, text. So next. Next, we have created the uh, hieroglyphic text, a uh, text. So it is written in paperless text. So paperless, it is, uh, how should I say, uh, something like uh, a text that survived. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is, uh, it is something like a written materials that came from the paperless tree, so something like that. So it is the hieroglyphics found on some walls and works of art tended to be form, uh, formulaic and offered little information that wasn't already known. So just like I have, uh, just like what I have said earlier, that there are a lot of texts that are found in the caves, in tombs, in walls, but those informations are not really uh, explained well. So maybe there are some mistakes with the end, uh, with how the people interpret that text. Now we are going to talk about the evolution of our writings in Egypt. Okay. Next, we of course we have here the proto writing. So it is the first writing systems born in Egypt, consisting of a series of symbols and figures. All right. So this is the symbols we draw in on stones, walls, our vases, and a series of other factors that allow them to announce their customs and practices. So for example, uh, 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 they, you know, they learn or they, uh, they introduce their customs, their beliefs, or maybe their doctrines through writing on walls using this proto writing. So it is something like a symbol and figures that mostly only Egyptian people understand, understand it, especially the, the ancient one. Okay, next we have here the 21 century BC or before Christ. So it's the Egyptian, uh, in this, uh, maybe in this time, Egyptian began to use of papyrus. As what I have said earlier, it is a material that made uh, from a, a papyrus trees. So the phase of the literary manifestation began to have another service of variants among which funeral texts are included as well as the press of columns and indications of autobiography. So, uh, maybe, you know, uh, they started to develop, they started to uh, create poems, stories, uh, uh, you know, aside from the text that are being written in the world. So, they started to produce or to make uh, poetry or literature. Next, we have here the third century so it is the information, knowledge, and another service of contents began to be compiled and arranged in the well-known library of Alexandria. So in this time, uh, it is the time where uh, they, the literature of Egypt really developed and it really improved as they compiled uh, all of the poems from the 21th century. They compiled all, the uh, all of the poems or the literature and Something like uh, they, uh, they make a service that is being known until this day. 
Okay, now we are going to talk maybe the elements or the principles of the Egyptian literature. Let's put the first one, the most of the things that, uh, yeah, most of the things of Egyptian literature are, is the variety of things that were found in the mani manifestations of, again, most of the themes of the literature is something like the idea that based on the, on the text that, uh, that we found on towns and walls, and yeah, something like uh, the ideas that maybe the ancient people write them, or write, or write as their customs or groups. Okay, the importance of Egyptian mythology. So, since the Egyptian gods became one of the most important things affecting the lives of the inhabitants in general. So in, uh, in mythology, uh, Egyptian mythology, they use this one uh, maybe to to introduce or to to disseminate the, their doctrines, their, their customs, or maybe their uh, should I say their their behavior or how people should behave in some ways. They really give essential or uh, or Egyptian gods are very essential in their life. So they really need to follow what the gods or what the Egypt gods. My space. So, so that's, that's why uh, uh, the issues such as curses, when the divine commandments were broken, as well as, well as other consequences, uh, were one of the most developed issues in order to, to keep the inhabitants under control. control. So, so that is uh, how important mythology in their lives. Now, now we have here the materials used. So, so the, the first thing the Egyptians used for writing were chisels to carve on the stones. Because as I have said, that Egyptians, uh, Egyptians really like to carve, to carve text. Uh, that is their way, uh, maybe to, uh, to disseminate the news or the information through carving stones or walls, something like that. Okay, now we are going to talk about the writers of Egyptian literature. So those who dedicated themselves to the activity of writing were known as scribes, a social group in charge of transmitting, canonizing, storing, and writing literary texts. So most of the writers are scribes. Uh, it is really those people who really studied or who have uh, maybe the high, uh, the high intellect in terms of writing. But there are also some uh, other writers that are not scribes or doesn't belong or don't belong in social groups. But those writers mm. commonly came from uh, maybe the high status family. So th they are often people from the upper class, uh, from the upper social class. And that's all. So next we are going to talk about the writers of Egyptian literature. Thank you. <coughs> Hello everyone, good afternoon. So I am the next reporter. So th this afternoon we are going to talk about the authors of Egyptian literature. So now let's have the first person. So, okay, so this time uh, let's have Nagib Mafoz. So Nagib Mahfouz is uh, Abdelaziz Ibrahim Ahmed Al Basha. So we can call. So this is his. Um, uh, this is his complete name. So he was born on December 11, 1911, at Cairo, Egypt, and died also on August 30, 2006. So, all right. So, uh, all right. So um, he is an Egyptian writer who won the 1988 Nobel Prize in literature so Mahfouz is regarded as one of the first contemporary writers in the Arabic literature along with Saha Hussein to explore themes of existentialism. So now uh, his achievements as a short story writer are demonstrated in such collections as Dunya Allah that was a 1963 on God's, or God's Will. So, the time and place and other stories during 1991 and the seventh event 2005 and 
are collections of his stories in English translation. So, Malfoy's wrote more than 45 novels and short story collection, as well as some 30 screenplays and several plays. So, Asta al Tiral al Andantia, it was written on 1996, or Echoes of an Autobiography. It is a collection of parables and his sayings in, in 1986, the Nadib Mafoz Mid Medal for Literature was published to honor Arabic writers. So uh, now let's have the, se the second person. All right, so at uh, this time, let's have Adaf Suwir. So he was born in Cairo and educated in So now let's have uh, Adaf Suez. So he is the author of two collections of short stories, uh, Aisha 1983 and Sand Piper 1986, and two novels. So it is in the eye of the sun. About it is about a young Egyptian woman's life in Egypt and England, where she goes to study as a postgraduate set against key events in the history of modern uh, modern Egypt. So it was published in. 1992 and the map of love also was on 1999 so it is the story of a love love affair between an english woman and an egyptian a nationalist chief in cairo in 1900s as secrets are uncovered by the woman's great granddaughter herself in love an egyptian mu musician so now let's have the next one Okay, uh, now let's have Yusuf Idris. So, uh, he is uh, he was born on May 19, 1927, so at uh, Al-Bayram, Egypt, and also died on August uh, 1, 1991, at London, at London. So, he was an Egyptian playwright and novelist who broke with traditional Arabic literature by mixing colloquial di dialect with conventional classic Arabic narration in the writing of realistic stories about ordinary villages. So, Idris also studied of medicine at that University of Cairo during 1945 to 1951 and was a participating physician in Cairo when he began to write fiction. As a committed leftist, he initially supported President Gamal Abdel Nasser's that reforms, but later in 1954, was imprisoned for opposing Nasser. So now, uh, Edris' first uh, anthology of stories is that uh, the Arkas Layali, or in English, it is The Cheapest Night. So it, uh, it, is a, it was appeared in 1954 and was quickly followed by several more volumes, including uh, Liza Kadalik uh, during 1957. So isn't that so? So now, uh, in the 1960s, he chose to create a uniquely Egyptian dramatic form using colloquial language and elements of traditional folk drama and shadow theater. So he presented his plan in a series of three essays entitled Towards a New Arabic Theater. And with that also, he tried to put it into practice in his own place, notably Al-Lazat, Al-Hariha, uh, during 1950. 58, so at uh, the critical moment. So now, Alfie Rahir during 1964. So Alfie Rahir uh, also uh, in English is something the far force or the flip flop or flip flop. And also the Al, -Al, 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 -Al during 1969, or it is called the Swipe One. Now, Idris' other major work included the novels Al Haram uh, 1959 or The Forbidden and Al-Aib, 1962, or The Sun. So in the eye of the beholder, the tales of Egyptian life from the writings of Yusuf Idris during 1978, and also The Rings of Greenish Brass during 1984, and two collections of his work published in translation. Now let's have the next author. <coughs> okay, so Atawfiq Al-Hakim. So. Uh, also, it is also called, in full, it is called Taufik Kusayan Al-Hakim. So he was born on October 9, 1898 at Alexandria, Egypt, and also died on July 26, 1987 at Cairo. So he was a founder of contemporary Egyptian 
drama and a leading figure in modern Arabic literature. So, Al Hakim uh, was uh, won fame as a dramatist with uh, Al 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 Kaf 1992, or The People of the Cave, which was ostensibly based on the story of the seven slippers of Ephesus, but which was actually a study of the human struggle against time. So this introduced a series of dramas of ideas or a symbolism. So they included Charaza during 1934, based on the Thousand and One Nights, as well as the place Al Malik Udib or King Oedipus that was on 1939. So there is also the Pygmalion uh, during 1942 on Sula uh, Sulaiman at Hakim during or Solomon the Solomon the Wise during 1934. So his output of more than 50 plays also included many on Egyptian social scenes such as Sir Al Mutahira or the Secret of the Suicide Girl that was in 1937 and also the uh, Rusasa Phil Akhtalb during 1994 or it is a bullet in the heart. So his oldest drama was the Lensi Muhammad 1936 which was not intended for performance. And also uh, he made drama a uh, respected Arabic literary genre prior to him prose plays had been primarily lightweight comedy or farce. So while verse had been used by such noted poets as Ahmad Chaugi for heroic drama, Al Hakim, however, wrote only in prose a flexible, high quality prose, often inter um interspersed interspersed with colloquial Arabic. So his autobiographical no autobiographical novel, Ya uh, Yaumiyat Naib Al Ayaf uh, or the Maze of Justice that was on 1937. So it is a satire on Egyptians' official down. So now let's have the next one. Okay, now let's have the Taha Hussein. So uh, also Taha Hussein, or it is also Taha Hussein. It, he was born on uh, November 14, 1989. So uh, Maghag at Maghagag, Egypt, and also died on October 28, 1973, Cairo. So uh, he was an outstanding figure of modernist movement in Egyptian literature, whose writings in Arabic include novels, stories, criticism, and social and political essays outside Egypt. So he is best known through his autobiography, Al Ayam, um, 1929, or the, uh, it was titled as the, the Day, so the first modern Arab literary work to be acclaimed in the West. And now, uh, Taha Hussein also returned. All right, so now, la, now in additional information, so Taha Hussein. Uh, was born in modest circumstance, circumstances and was blinded by an illness at age two. So in 1902, he was sent to Al Azhar Seminary in Ka uh, Cairo, the leading Sunni center of higher Islamic education. But he was soon at odds with its predomin uh, predominantly conservative authorities. In 1908, he entered the newly opened particular universities of Cairo, and in 1914, he was the first to obtain a doctorate there. Further study at the Sorbonne familiarized him with the culture of the West. So, uh, after that, uh, he returned to the Egypt from France to become a professor of Arabic literature at the University of Cairo. His, car his career there was frequently stormy for his bold views in uh, English religious conservative, his application of modern critical methods in Phil R.C. Church uh, Jahili during 1926 or on pre Islamic poetry. So it was embroiled him in fierce uh, polem uh, polemic. And in this book, he contended that a great deal of the poetry reputed to be pre Islamic had been forged by Muslims of a later date for various reasons. One being to give credence to choir Anis Smith. For this, he was tried for apostasy, but he was not convicted. So, in another book, 
Facebook um, Okay, <clears throat> okay, so now let's have the next author. So this have Nawal Il Sadawi. So it is also spelled as Nawal Al Sadawi. She was born on October 27, 1931, Kafr at Kafr Tala at Egypt. So also died on March 21, 2021, very recent only at Cairo. So as she is an Egyptian public health physician, psychiatrist, author and advocate of women's rights sometimes described as the Asimoni Bibi of the law of the Arab world. So El Sadawi was a feminist whose writings and professional career were dedicated to political and sexual rights for women. So now let's have the next one. Okay, now now let's have Ala Ala Al Aswani. So also spelled as Ala Al Aswani. Now let's have I uh, he was born on May 27, 1957 at Cairo, Egypt. So he was also an Egyptian author known for his best-selling novels and for his vocal criticism of the Egyptian government, especially its former president, Osni Mubarak. So Aswani was the son of Abbas al-Aswani, a lawyer in a mode of literature, who was credited with reviving the Magama anecdotes written in Ryan Rose and Jenra and who won the 1972 State Award for Literature for his novel. So, as when he pursued a dentistry and writings with equal fervor, he developed an interest in literature and culture early in life when his father allowed him to attend his literary gatherings. And as a student, as when he wrote short stories, plays, and newspapers articles dealing with uh, politics and literary criticism. Uh, as when his father, however, strongly discouraged him for pursuing a career as a full time writer. So now let's have the next one. Okay, one, go. go. Now let's have Salwa Bakr. So, okay, so Salwa Bakr uh, is an Egyptian critic, novelist, and Author. So she was born also in uh, Mataria district in Cairo in 1949. Uh, her father was a, real, a railway worker and she studied business at An Shams University, gaining a bachelor degree in 1972. So uh, she went to earn um, another bachelor in literary criticism in 1976. Before embarking on a career in journalism, she worked as a film and theater critic for various Arabic newspapers and magazines. So Bakr's father died early, leaving her mother a poor widow. Her work often deals with the lives of the uh, impoverished and the marginalized. In 1985, she published her first collection of short stories, Zinat at the President's Funeral, which was an immediate success. She, her debut novel was called Was a uh, was of Al Balbal 1993. So Salwa Bakr is married with children and lives in Cairo. So now let's have Miral Al Sahaway. Okay, so she is an award winning Egyptian novelist, a short story writer, and academic Fulbright scholar. And currently she is associate professor of modern Arabic literature and Middle East or Islamic studies at the School of International Letters and Cultures, or SILC at Arizona State University in Tampa. So easy, she comes from a conservative Bedouin background and is regarded as a pioneering literary figure. The Washington Post has described her as the first novelist to present Egyptian Bedouin life beyond stereotypes and to illustrate the crisis of between women and the urge to break free. So now let's have, all right, so now let's have Abbas Mahmoud al Akkad. So he born on, uh, okay, so, okay, so now he was born on uh, June 28, 1989. So as one Egypt died March uh, 12, 1964 at Cairo Egyptian 
at Cairo, so he was an Egyptian journalist who went on a literary critic who was an innovator of 20th century and Arabic poetry and criticism. So, Al Akka's literary works included poems and novel Sarah 1938, based on one of his own romances and critics of classical and modern Arabic authors. So, his essays shows the influence of nascent modern Arabic authors and also uh, it was an influence on 19th century English essayists, particularly Thomas Carly. Now let's have, all right, so now let's have Isan Ab Abdil Kudur. So uh, he was a great author and also was born on January 1, 1919 and died on January 12, 1990 in Egypt, Al-Akbar Al -Akbar and Al-Aram newspapers. He wrote published novels and worked as a journalist and editor. A number of his novels have been adapted into films, and he served for many years as editor of the literary journal Razal Yusuf, which has been adapted into many different languages. All right, so now let's move on. All right, so now let's have Fauzia Mara. So Mara's writing varied between fiction, theater, criticism, journalism, intellectual writing, and translation. Her writing, uh, her writing became popular when the Egyptian cinema produced one of her first novels in the film entitled Ba'it al Talibat, also known as The Girl's Dormitory, directed by Ami Dia Al uh, Albin in 1976. So the film was inspired by her arrival to the capital and her stay in the girl's dormitory while studying in Cairo's university. Uh, her other literary works have also been turned into, TV, into films and TV series. She is a pioneer in women's journalism in Egypt. Moreover, she is a contributor to enriching the theater in different parts of Egypt. She was one of the founders of Saba al Khair magazine with the late Amit Ba Elden, who Ansala Jahim supported in her early writing career. Now, let's have the last one. Okay, so now, okay, so now let's have Hafiz Ibrahim. So, uh, Hafiz Ibrahim, uh, also called Muhammad Hafiz Ibrahim, was born on February 14, 1871 at Egypt and also died July 21, 1932 at the age of 61. So, uh, so Hafiz Ibrahim, he was, uh, he was a literary, his literary works included poems and also novel so that's all so thank you so much all right so good afternoon everyone so now at this time let's talk about the egyptian myth so since that you're already done with uh, uh, Egypt, uh, Egypt background, background together, together with the culture, culture also the also backgrounds, the, backgrounds, the author backgrounds, the author backgrounds I, mean. I mean. So now let us talk now about the eight, eight Egyptian myths. Myth. So without so any further ado, let, let us discuss first the first myth, which is all about the Egyptian creation myth. All right, so, but before right, anything so else, I would like to introduce to you like the to four you pairs of gods and goddesses, of gods and which, goddesses is which, is which is a symbolizing in the different aspects of being chaos that existed before the creation. So we have here the four pairs. The first one we have Nan and Nanet, which is symbolized as the water. And then we have Amon and Amonet, which is symbolized as the hidden nets. And then he and Hohit, which is symbolized which as, is infinity. as infinity and the last one we and have the kick we and a coquette symbolizes, symbolizes as, the as the darkness all right so i will introduce right, so to you the characters of the, the characters egypt, of the egypt uh, creation myth creation so we have here so ra, have here ra the, creator the creator god of god ancient, ancient egypt. egypt and then we also have and here shu and tef not which is the sons of Ra. So now we will know of how the creation of Egyptian 
is all right is, now let's right. have this now one let's have this one you know what class before anything yeah before anything there was nine and again and that again, nine is that nine means, means nothing mess, nothing mess. All right, so water right, so in water every direction, in as, far direction as far as the eye could, could see. see. From none, From a, none single a single thought emerged, emerged and, became and became the God the Ra. Ra. And take note and that take that note God that Ra, Ra is the one who one created, who created everything, everything in Egypt. In Egypt. So, so Ra began, Ra began speaking, speaking and everything he said came into being. And after that, what he said, he spoke and then after, there's, there's two, two children, children were born, were born. and the two and children, children named uh, uh, Shu and, and Tifnat. And, and then one time, time uh, Ra, Ra fell asleep, and then his and children then his wandered children into darkness, darkness and became and lost. lost. And then with and that, with that uh, Ra, uh, Ra, was, Ra devastated was devastated when he, when woke, he up. woke up. So what so that what he that did he by that time is that. He kept on, he kept searching, on searching on his one his lost, lost child. child. So as he so waited as for, the return, for the return, he created, he created a, new a new eye, eye to, replace to replace the one the he had one sent out to search. search. So Ra's so original, original eye eventually, eventually found Shu and Tefnut. Tefnut. Wow, finally. Oh, finally. Ra found, Ra found out his, his two, two children. children. So with that, so Ra, Ra feel overjoyed. Over he feels so happy and he whipped and whipped not because he said but again he is happy and then with that his tears became the first human beings take note that Shu and Tefnut are not human being but they are also God and goddesses all right so now let's have the second myth the death of Osiris but before that who is Osiris okay let us know that one at this, at this time. So allow me to so introduce to you our characters, characters in the second myth. myth. So again, we have here the Osiris, Osiris who rules over, over Egypt, Egypt and is well loved by all. by all. And then we have here Set, Osiris, Osiris brother. brother. He jealous, jealous of Osiris' of good fortune. Oh, later we will know that that one of how Set rule over the Egypt since he felt jealous to his brother. And then we also have here the Anubis, which is the funeral god. We also have here the Isis, Osiris' wife, and Horus, Osiris, and Isis' child. Alright, so. So we all so know, we all as I've said to you earlier, that, that God Osiris, Osiris is the one who, the ruled, one who ruled Egypt, Egypt and well loved by, by everyone in Egypt. Egypt. So, so God said, God which is the brother, the of, brother Osiris, of Osiris, felt jealous, jealous for what, what uh, Osiris, Osiris had. had. So, so what, what uh, God uh, said God did to his brother is that he threw in the box and throws him into the Nile. So Nile is another place in Egypt. So by that so time, by that time Isis, Isis, Isis' wife, finds, finds the box. The of box. course, if you are the if wife, you will find, you will, find e you will do, you everything do everything in order to order find to your find loved your one. one. So that's, so that's what, Osiris what Osiris did in order to find, to find his, husband. his husband. Unfortunately, Unfortunately he found he his found husband, husband died. died. So with that, with that she, brings she brings his body, his body back to Egypt for burial. But Seth cuts his brother corpse into four thin pieces and scatters them throughout Egypt. So, with that when Isis was very devastated, she weeps for weeks. This causes the flooding of the Nile. See, she searches the land and eventually finds all but none one of the pieces. So, he found nothing. So with that one, uh, I, uh, one God helped Isis to find, or let's say to help her to bring life of his husband. So that God who helped her is that God Anubis, which is the funeral God. So unfortunately, because uh, his husband is not whole, take note that it cuts by 14 pieces, so Osiris can only remain in the land of the living for one night. Alright, the next morning, when Isis wake up alone, Osiris has taken his place as the god of the underworld, and then Seth takes the throne of Egypt. So of course, that's what Osiris wants, that he would like to sit the throne of Egypt. And with that one, 
Cyrus, Cyrus I mean, I Seth mean, didn't Seth know, didn't that. know that. that Isis is Isis pregnant, is pregnant with, with Osiris, Osiris' child, his, child brother. his brother, and that, and that child, child name, name Horus, Horus, who will eventually, eventually avenge his, his father. father. All right, so now let's have the third the myth, myth, which is which Isis, Isis and the seven the scorpions. The scorpions. All right, so, All right, with, so this with this Isis, Isis and seven, seven scorpions, scorpions, the characters, the characters are, we have, we have Circuit, Circuit, the goddess, the goddess of, of venomous, venomous creatures. creatures. So take that that venomous, venomous, it is very harmful. Very harmful. So what kind so of what venomous kind of creature, creature is, that? is that? So we have here so the, have scorpions. the scorpions. Stay with the Stay with Isis and Horus as, as their bodyguards. The bodyguards. So scorpions serves as a bodyguard of... Isis and Horus. Isis and, Horus. and in this and story, in this we have story, here also the wealthy, also woman, the wealthy woman slams her door in Isis' face, face, refusing to give her and her, her baby, and food, her baby or food or shelter. So later, so later on, we will know about, will know about and what is the rule of the rule wealthy woman in this woman story. story. Alright, so let's start right, with so this. this. So, so Isis hides, Isis her, hides pregnancy her pregnancy and the birth of Horus from Seth. So of course, we all know that Seth is very angry, get mad with his brother because he really felt she with, it. with it. So, with that, so with that, she plans she to raise plans Horus, to Horus to be strong, to be strong and good and, and, good to, prepare and to prepare him to overthrow, to overthrow his, his uncle. uncle. And that uncle named uncle Seth. Seth. So, Sir Ket, as I said earlier, earlier that, that, that uh, he is a go- he is uh, she a go- is a goddess of venomous creatures, arranges to have seven of her most powerful warriors. So, there are seven scorpions that he is that she sent to Isis in order to guard them. All right, so regarding with that one in the place of Egypt, pretending uh, Isis and Horus pretending to be mortal. So Isis rooms from village to village, relying on the charity of the people she encounters. So in the village, here you will know the rule of wealthy woman in that story. So the wealthy woman lives in a village and then uh, she uh, she slams her door door in Isis' Isis' face face. because he, the the wealthy woman don't want want to give give her her food or even a shelter. shelter. But regarding with that, that, Circuit circuit knows knows about that one. one. So he really felt felt angry. angry. So So what that he did is that that, uh, the uh, scorpion bodyguards give all their venom to the strongest two among them. So that night, the scorpions, the scorpions think the sign of the wealthy, of the wealthy woman. woman. When Isis when realizes, realizes what has, has happened, happened, she recites, she recites a, powerful a powerful incantation to nullify, to nullify the, poison the poison and bring the boy, the boy back, back to life. life. So we can so see we can here see that here Isis is really, really, is really a very, uh, really a, a good, uh, a very good, good goddess. Very so good with that, when the wealthy so woman that, realizes wealthy who woman Isis realizes really is, uh, uh, he know he is able yeah, to know uh, that know, Isis is the is one, of the, goddess, is so one of the goddess. So she apologizes, she apologizes and offers and her offers all of her riches. Her all, of her riches. All, right, so all right. So now let's continue with the story. Let's, let's have her the fourth one. one. Battle for Battle the throne. For the throne. So regarding with us, who so are uh, who are the two who are uh, fighting for the throne? Okay, let us know that one this time. So regarding with that, so when Horus comes of age, age, when Horus become, when older, Horus become older, he appears, he appears before, before the council of the gods of the and asks them to remove Set from, from the power and grant him, and grant him the, throne. the throne. Because we all know that his because father is the one who, the one who uh, ruled, uh, ruled before. before. But then, then Set did, did everything in order for his father, what's the name of that, Osiris to... Get away of the throne. throne. So the gods gods and goddesses are unsure unsure of what to do. do. So while Seth's actions actions were terrible, terrible, he has kept Egypt Egypt safe from its enemies. enemies. So they they fear that that without Seth as Farwa, Egypt could could fall into into chaos. chaos. So that's that's the other other thing of the the gods and goddesses goddesses think think about. about What will happen if the Egypt, it could be fall into chaos. But with that, with that oh, for, for over 80, 80 years, years, Seth and Horus battled viciously for the, for the throne, with neither emerging as the obvious of Vector. Who do you think will be the winner of this battle? Alright, let us know about this. So in one fight, Seth plucks out Horus' eyes. The goddess Hathor gives them back to him. So regarding with that battle, 
between Seth and Horus. So uh, we have here the goddess Hathor helps Horus to give him the sight again. So Horus nearly drowns Seth in a boat race. So here, there's a battle now. There's the battle. The star. The battle started. So Seth transforms into a hippopotamus and sinks Horus' boat. We all know that hippopotamus is a very big, uh, big animal. All right. So eventually, take note that Ra is the one who created everything in Egypt. So Ra himself sends word to the underworld, asking for Osiris' opinions. So, so everyone don't everyone know that Osiris, know Osiris is alive, is alive. And, Osiris and Osiris is in, is in the other world. So not surprisingly, so Osiris says his son should son rule Egypt. Egypt. So, that's so that's what Osiris, Osiris said, said that my son, my son will be the ruler, ruler of the of Egypt, Egypt and that son named name, Horus. Horus. With that, With the, that council the council rose for Horus. So everyone voted for Horus. And Seth gives up the throne, so finally Seth uh, give up uh, give everything, up everything about, about the throne, throne that he that fight for fight how many for years. years. Alright, so, All right, so regarding with that, with Horus, Horus takes, takes his place his as the ruler, ruler god of Egypt. Egypt. Alright, so now let's have the fifth one, the god of mummies. Alright, so later on we will know what what is mummies is all about and what kind of god mummies is. Alright, so we have here the characters. Anubis is the son of Set. And, and the goddess Nymphes. The goddess Nymphes. So, there's so there's another gods and goddesses. And goddesses. So, Nymphes so Nymphes is the mother, is the mother of, of Anubis. Anubis. So, so uh, uh, his, mother his mother of Anubis, of Anubis which is Anubis goddess is Nymphes, 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 doted on him Nymphes and loved him, him dearly. But his but father was father cold was and never seemed to never care for him for much. much. So, uh, uh, why uh, do you why think you that think his father, that his father didn't, care didn't care him much? Him much. It is because, it is because uh, uh, Seth think that uh, uh, mm, uh, Seth think uh, that Anubis, Anubis is not Anubis really his really son. son. He doubted, he doubted that, that uh, Anubis, Anubis is the son the of Osiris, of Osiris he, which is his, his brother. brother. All right. All right. So because, so of, because this, of this, he learns he to learns stay to out of sight. He becomes, he becomes stealthy, stealthy like, the like the jackals that loves to watch. watch. He watches he them watches hunt them and kill, kill, but also but watches also them watch scavenge the bodies of the dead. Of the dead. It gives it him gives lots him of lots time of to consider the nature of life and death and, death and how and the how two are intertwined. Eventually, he decides to become the ruler of the other world. Neither of his parents are surprised because we all know that he is a very strong one. All right, let's, all right continue. let's continue. So Anubis, so, Anubis enjoys, his, enjoys his, position. his position. So we all know that we before, know that before Osiris, is the, Osiris is the one who ruled in the underworld, under but now but it is now Anubis. Anubis. Okay, so it okay, seems so like it's, it's like really true, true that Anubis, Anubis is the one, is, the one uh, is another, another son of Osiris. Of Osiris. All right. All so right. and would have so gladly would have done, done it for eternity, but when his father kills his beloved uncle. So, so Anubis journeys, Anubis journeys back, back to Earth, to, Earth to, help to help his aunt. His aunt, his aunt his is named Isis. Isis. So, so, prepare, prepare okay, yes, Isis. Isis. So, in doing so, in doing so he, he creates, creates the first, first mummy. mummy. So, what do I mean, so by, mean mummy? by mummy? So, so setting the standard for how humans, humans should, should treat, treat the bodies of their loved ones, ones after, after death. death. So, this God's so mummy is the one who treat the bodies of their loved ones after death. After death. Alright. All right. So when Osiris, so when Osiris returns, returns to the underworld, world, Anubis, Anubis happily, steps, happily aside, steps aside, allowing Osiris to take the throne. From the day from the day oh, all right, so from, oh, from the so day onward, the day Osiris, Osiris ruled the other world. And Anubis and becomes Anubis the god of funeral rites and mummification. So he is the he is so happy to be able to work so closely with his uncle, which is his hun uncle would be uh, could be there could be, 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 could be his I mean could be his father. All right, so now let's have this right, the sixth so one. one, the goddess of the, the waters. Of the water. So we have here Tefnat, so just like what I was told to you earlier, that Tefnat is Ra's only daughter and one of the first goddesses ever created. Also thus, 
God of God wisdom. Of wisdom. So regarding with that, that Tifnat Ra's only daughter Ra's and daughter one of the first, the first I mean first I mean goddesses, first goddesses ever, created ever created was annoyed. Was annoyed. Ra spends, Ra spends all of his time of his worrying time about his great grandchildren who are constantly causing trouble with their pity squabbles. So regarding with that, Isis was, was by far by the most far beloved the most goddess, goddess in Egypt. Egypt. Even though Tifnut is the Tifnet goddess who brings them, them in the rain, take note of this class that, that Tifnut is the Tifnet one who gives rain, the rain and waters of the Nile, the Nile and Nile is and one, of the, one of the plains in Egypt. Egypt. So people so in people Egypt in praise Isis, Isis for flooding at each year. Having had enough, Tifnut decides to run away. Ra ignores his potent daughter, but top, God of wisdom, and the tongue of Ra isn't so sure. so sure. So now let's have now here let's the, have goddess here the goddess of happiness, happiness. Gets, angry. gets angry. Do you think that gods, gods of happiness of happiness became angry? angry. Alright, now let's right, know, now about, let's this know about this one. So we have here the so author, have here the I, author. I, mean the I mean the characters. We have Hathor, we have Hathor. the eye of Ra, the eye of Ra. And, and Hathor, Hathor is being loved being by, humans by humans and also, and also gods uh, like uh, him so much. Him so and then Hathor called later as Sikmet, which is the goddess the of goddess war. war. So again, so that again, that uh, gods of uh, goddess gods becomes of into gods of, of anger. That's why he calls why goddess, he of goddess of war. war. Alright, so now let us know right, why, so and why and what happened. Why he became a why goddess, of, became war. A goddess of war. Alright, so... Uh, Hathor loves, loves to dance loves among the mortals among the and bring them pleasure and, and joy in the place of the place Egypt. Of so Hathor gives people, so gives people beer. They're really, they're enjoying, really so enjoying so much. But, but when Ra comes, when comes to her and demands her and she demands be the one to take the vengeance of the human for disrespecting him. So we all know that many people having this respect to God's Ra so that's why he recommended him to vengeance to the human. So, uh, but before that one, Hathor can't do it because even he, even she himself, really loves mortals. But once he starts listening to their ugly taunts, uh, Hathor started to hear that there are, uh, I mean, the people in people Egypt having, having ugly thoughts, and, and then what should uh, what and, uh, did what did Hathor did Hathor to did them is that, is that uh, he turned uh, he himself, turned into, himself a into a mighty lion and, 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 and kills every mortal. Mortal she encounters. So that's so why that's she why called she later as Sigmet, which is the goddess of war. So Ra is so impressed, but also but fearful. Also if Sigmet keeps Sigmet this up, there, there will be no one left to worship, to worship him. him. So, so had look at I you see, Ra, Ra what if Patu na tanan ni Hathor? So no one will no worship one him as a god, god, one of a god. I mean the creator of the Egypt. So now let's have this so last, have this last, last m story. Rhodopis, the Egyptian, Egyptian Cinderella. Cinderella. Wow, so wow, amazing. So Even in Egypt, even they, they, they have a Cinderella, have a Cinderella as, well. as well. So we have here the so character. Here the Rhodopis was a Greek girl who had, girl been, kidnapped who had been kidnapped by pirates, by pirates and, sold and sold into slavery. slavery. Alright, let us know about this story. So we have here Rhodopis was a Greek girl who had been kidnapped by pirates and sold into slavery. So with uh, regarding so with, with this, regarding with this but, you know what? but you know what? Rhodopis is a very kind-hearted kind woman. woman. But she's tested by, by the other slaves for her light hair and pale skin. But of course, she's, of course very she's very beautiful. Not just a beautiful, just but beautiful, he is all, uh, she, is, uh, she also is also a dancer. Also a dancer. So, the so the Egyptian who purchased Rhodopis buys her a pair of rose reed slippers to wear when she dances. When she dances. So someone purchased so him. Her, her, I mean. Her, I mean. So, so one day one the Paro announces, announces he will hold, he a, will large hold a large festival, festival for all to attend. And then with that one, in the in innermost falcon, falcon swoops down, down snatches, snatches one of the slippers and, and flies away. 
So Rhodopis so knows that this knows falcon that is the god the Horus. God Horus. And that he must and have some need for her slipper. So she simply so stacks its mate into mate roofs and continues, continues her, work. her work. So regarding, so with, regarding that, with that, Horus takes, Horus the, takes the slipper to the Parua and, and drops it into his lap. Into his lap. So, so Parua, Parua is the is one who... The one who uh, I mean, uh, Parua is the one who, the one who got the slippers that is taken away. So, Parua said, the Parua awarded that Horus is sending him a message and informing, and informing everyone, everyone, everybody in everybody Egypt, that he will marry the woman who fits into the slipper. So, Horus traveled all over the world. Not in the world, <laughs> but all over but in all Egypt, in Egypt up, and up and down in the Nile, in the Nile searching the searching owner, the of, that owner of that sleeper. And then with that one, I mean, Rudopis is frightened by the rights of the Faroe soldiers, soldiers and hides in the rushes. rushes. So what that so she what did is that she tried to hide herself. But of course, the... Uh, Horus, uh, Horus is really good, is really good in, in finding, finding the owner, the owner of that slipper, which is Herodopis. So, so, when, when Horus, Horus found, found a Rhodopis, it's really, really uh, he uh, tried, he uh, tried uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, she tries on the slipper, which, which fits perfectly to Rhodopis. And then, and then he, removes he removes it's made from her roots, roof, proving that they are hers. Parua tells, Parua tells everyone, everyone within Urshad that, that she will be his queen. So Rhodopis so become the queen of Egypt. Egypt. Alright, so, All right, I, so hope I hope that everyone, everyone of you listening, listening there, there learn, learn about, about the culture, the culture and, background and background of Egypt. Of Egypt. Also the, ba also the, the author backgrounds, backgrounds of Egyptian, Egyptian writers, writers or the authors. The authors. And I hope that we've learned something about the eight Egyptian myth. So, so, that's all for, that's our, all report. for our report. I hope that, that every of you guys learn from us. From so, us. Thank so, thank you and God bless everyone.